So today's video is one that I didn't actually plan on making, but you guys requested it quite a few times when I uploaded the breakdown of sounds of the Pacific Northwest. I got a ton of requests asking me to show you exactly how I pulled off this shot and turned this boring drone shot into a banger using Adobe After Effects. So today we're gonna dive into the comp, walk you through some mistakes I made and what eventually worked to pull off this effect. And I also wanna show you kind of as a little bonus at the end, uh, another effect that has some pretty heavy visual effects on it that no one really seemed to notice. So stick around for that. I actually didn't intend to go very effects heavy on this clip at all. I just ended up doing that because the location we initially planned to shoot at was completely covered in snow. So we had to kind of fall back and opt instead for a much less dramatic lake uh, right next to our Airbnb. Uh, it was also a lot later in the morning when we ended up getting the drone up just because I was running around shooting a bunch of other stuff for that blue hour sequence at the end of the video when the drone actually went up into the air it wasn't really blue hour anymore but we had to make the most of it but that wasn't the end of the world when i realized that i was going to have to use some pretty serious visual effects on this because i expected it to be pretty easy right just mask out the tent and the foreground and slap a fake mountain behind it and we're good right wrong i tried that and it looked terrible because the parallax was very unrealistic. The background moving in relation to the foreground just didn't look realistic at all. That's because we only had two layers of depth in the shot. I did a lot of experimentation trying to get that parallax right. At one point, I downloaded a bunch of individual tree stock photos and was gonna basically build a little 3D forest behind the tent so that you would have a realistic parallax when the camera moved in. I tried to learn about 3D projection to turn my mountain photo into a 3D asset that the camera could move towards and you'd see it moving at different rates and none of it looked good. But here's what eventually worked. So let's start at the very back of the shot and work our way all the way up to the camera. So at the very back, we have the sky layer, then the mountains in front of that, then a fake tree layer, then finally the actual foreground, an adjustment layer to make the tent look like it's glowing, and then a color grade and an animation on top to really wrap it all up and make it look more solidified into one shot. The first step was to mask and track the raw footage so that I could add these other fake assets behind it and replace the background. So I basically went through by hand, frame by frame, and masked out the foreground, the tent, and the ground right behind it. So we had that separate from everything behind it. Then I tracked two points on that foreground layer and attached a null object to them. And everything in the background is attached to that null object. Then I began compositing in the background, starting out with this tree layer directly behind the foreground. And this is just a stock photo that I found online. And then I luma keyed out the sky so that the trees would be on their own. Then I masked out the hill behind the tent and feathered that mask up so that the trees behind the tent would blend into the fake tree layer that I added directly behind them. Having this tree layer directly behind the tent is key because it hides the seam between the ground next to the tent and the mountain way behind them. So it makes it to where you can't see that weird change in parallax between them that makes it obvious that it's a composite. For the mountain, I had to composite it in a little bit differently because it's so much further away from the camera. So at first what I tried to do was create a realistic parallax by pushing it back in 3D space. And if you wanna create a similar effect where you're compositing something in that's really far away from the camera, this is usually a good place to start because a lot of the time, this is what you need to do to simulate that realistic parallax is have it further away in 3D space so that it's not as affected by the camera's motion and the track. But what I realized when I did that is that for this shot, the side to side motion in the clip actually isn't from the camera moving side to side, it's from me panning and tilting the camera to keep the framing and that'll affect the entire shot. So a good rule of thumb to keep in mind for this is that if you're causing motion by moving the camera side to side or up and down, that's gonna create a parallax between the foreground and the background. But if you're rotating the camera, tilting it side to side or up and down, panning around, then that's gonna affect the entire frame equally and won't have any parallax. So instead of pushing the mountain back in 3D space, I just created a separate track 
but this one didn't affect the scale. So it would still have the position keyframes, but as the camera's moving in closer to the tent, the background doesn't scale up to match it. It stays at the exact same scale like it would if it was actually there. Also, the reason that this camera angle is a little different from the rest of the video is because as I was going back to do screen recordings, I realized that I had put in the video that I pushed them out and back in 3D space and then remembered that that didn't work and that's actually not what I did. Give me a break. Um, it's been a while since I did this effect and I did what I could to purge it from my memory because it was a pain. Um, back to the video. What are we talking about now? Sky replacement, sky replacement. Then finally I just replaced the sky in that mountain photo so that it would match with the cloudy weather that happens in the rest of that sequence. And boom, you've added the fake mountain into the background of your drone shot. But there's a few more things for this particular shot that we need to add in to make it look good and to hide the seams in these visual effects. The idea of this shot was to have the orange glow in the tent contrast with the dark blue of the rest of the scene. So we had someone in the tent turn on a light on cue as the drone was moving forward, but because it's so bright when we actually filmed this, you can barely see him turn on the light. So we need to compensate for that with visual effects. Basically to do this, I just duplicated that foreground layer that has the tent as part of it, masked around only the tent so that we have it on its own separate layer, then used curves to brighten it and give it a bit of a warmer tint. Tent, like T-I-N-T, not T-E-N-T. Tent. I also went in and color corrected all of the layers separately so that they would match. Like the mountain in the background is a bit too purplish blue and not greenish blue. And the foreground is obviously not really blue at all. It's more kind of just tan and brown. So I made it blue. And then once everything looked pretty consistent, I added a final grade over the entire shot. And this is what really solidifies the effect because I went with a really dark, monochrome grade, just blue across the entire image and really deep dark shadows. That dark color grade is key because it hides some of these seams in between the effects. For example, if you look at this big tree behind the tent, you can see that it kind of just disappears halfway up the trunk of the tree. But with the color grade, you don't really notice that. I also just added a ton of blue into the shot to simulate blue hour lighting conditions that you get early in the morning and also to make the tent pop when he turns on that orange light. Finally, since this shot is 16 by nine and my final video was widescreen, uh, 2.35 to one aspect ratio, I was able to animate a tilt down under those widescreen bars. And this is something I almost always do for most of my clips whenever I have those widescreen bars on is I animate a little bit of motion under them. This just adds an extra subtle element of choreography to the drone shot, having that nice slow tilt down, and also just helps to blend the layers together a bit more because you have them all doing that motion together. And there we go. That's how I added a giant fake mountain into the background of this drone shot. But before we end off this video, let's talk about one more visual effects shot that I don't think hardly any of you noticed. Even after I posted the before and after, I only got like one comment even acknowledging this effect. And that's later on in this sequence with the tent and it's the coffee shot at the very end. We didn't actually make coffee for this clip. It's just water in the mugs. And when we hit those mugs together, some of that water splashes out and you can see it in the shot and it's water. So it's clear because that's how water is, but it needs to be coffee. Coffee's not clear, it's red. So I was kind of banging my head against my desk um, when I went to edit this shot and realized that very obvious mistake that I should have thought of while we were filming, but uh, After Effects can do anything. So I literally went in, masked out frame by frame all of those water droplets and used curves to darken them and give them kind of a reddish brown coffee colored tint. Also is water, right? Like it's very organic in shape. So they look completely different in every frame. So it wasn't even worth trying to like make one mask and then animate it throughout the scene. So I literally just masked out separately on each frame. Started new on every single frame. This didn't take as long uh, as the tent shot, maybe took me like one or two hours to make this coffee effect, but it was a pain in 
the ass because it was just so boring, monotonous, and tedious trying to mask out this water that's not even like a real shape. But as inconvenient as it is to do stuff like that, you will not regret it when your video is live on YouTube and you just made it that little 1% better. Whenever you can, always focus on the little details like that because as small as they are, they do end up making a big difference. But I hope you enjoyed this video, found it insightful, learned some new techniques from it. And if you did, do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new filmmaking tutorials every week or so, but that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.